This tutorial assumes you're setting up a Radio Oddity GD77 to use repeaters and that you're new to DMR and new to ham radio. I am new to both, but I've spent some time setting my radio up and I thought I should share what I found out. This will be slow and tedious, but it's not as slow as trying to randomly figure it out on your own. That's why I made this video. I am not covering how to set up to talk directly to another radio. This is only for talking to repeaters. A repeater is a radio tower that retransmits your signal so it can be heard from a much further distance. Most DMR repeaters also connect to the internet so you can talk to other repeaters and other people all around the world. First of all, to keep things as simple as possible, we'll just set up the radio for your local geographical area. You will still be able to talk to people all around the world. What we're setting up is the configuration of your local repeaters so that your radio knows how to talk to them. If you plan to travel to other areas and want to use your radio there, you can repeat this process for that specific area. For now, I'm just going to talk about making a home area. I also advise not skipping ahead. If you do things in the wrong order, you might have to repeat some steps, which will make it even more tedious. Here's a short rundown on the steps. If you're already familiar with setting up the radio, you might just want to screenshot this and not have to listen to all the details. So the, the short list is to set up talk groups and in this software, they call it digital contacts. They have a translation error there. Uh, make a scan list called home, but leave it empty at first. Set up receive group. And this is optional if you plan to use monitor all the time, but it's better to have a receive group. Set up the channels. The channels are the repeaters and all of the information about them, like the frequencies and color codes and all that junk. You want to set up a scan list if you plan to scan. Otherwise, you can skip that part. And you want to set up a zone. And a zone represents your geographical area, which means all the repeaters that are around you that you can talk to. So now I'll explain these steps in more detail. First, you might want to get a notepad and a pencil and a beer or at least be ready to use a computer to copy and paste to a text file or a spreadsheet. So what you want to do is find out everything you can about repeaters in your area. Look for repeaters that are within about 50 miles or less. Uh, different websites will have different information and some of it is wrong or missing. So this can be a little frustrating. You can Google things like repeater DMR and include the name of your city or county, or you can try a couple of websites I'm going to suggest. First, not the best website, but I'm going to suggest cqdmrmap.com. Their map is not complete, but it loads quickly. It will give you some basic information and you can grab the call sign of a repeater and paste it in Google or the Brandmeister website and get more detailed information. So what you want to know about each repeater is the call sign, the frequency, the offset, which is usually a, a plus or a minus. I'll get into that later. The color code, which Talk groups are in each time slot. There are two time slots. So for example, let's say you get the call sign of a repeater. You can go to brandmeister.network, then click on repeaters on the left side, and then search for the call sign using the search box in the, on the right side. If it's listed, click on the call sign in the name column where it's lit up in blue. This will tell you everything you need to know about that repeater. 
And that's the information you need to set up your code plug. Um, unfortunately, Brandmeister doesn't list all of the repeaters, but the ones that are in there, it has all the information you need. So now let's say you're in Brandmeister and you've looked up the repeater. On the left side, uh, where it says slot details, this tells you the top groups that the repeater will broadcast automatically. You want to write down those numbers. If there are any in orange, those are top, temporary top groups, which means somebody transmitted to that repeater using that top group, and now the repeater is listening to that top group so that the person who transmitted can hear the replies. And there's a timeout on that. It's usually 10 minutes. You probably don't need to write down the orange ones because they're temporary. They're going to go away. Another cool thing here on the Brandmaster website is um, if you look at that map on the right side, you can make it display the coverage area of that repeater. What you do is you click on the square that's on the right side of the map and then select plot. The areas with a strong signal will light up in red and that means you'll have a good signal, obviously. Uh, the spotty areas will be green and if it's blank, it's not going to work. Another way to look up repeaters is to go to brandmeister.network and then select data visualization and then network map. This is very slow, which is why I didn't suggest it initially, but it has more accurate information showing the uh, actual location of the repeaters. Whereas that other website, it only shows approximately the location. You may also want to Google uh, for analog repeaters in your area in case you want to talk on analog. You know, you might be crazy uh, if you have any interest. For those, you need the frequency, the offset, and a tone. The tone is a little trigger that tells it that you're a real signal and not a fake one. The tone will be listed um, a number like 94.8 or 100.0. It's a low frequency that gets transmitted along with your signal that keys the, uh, the repeater. Um, the offset, again, is shown as a plus or a minus. Um, the plus and the minus means that your, your transmitted signal is at a different frequency than what you're receiving because you can't use the same frequency at the same time. The general rule is that for the 2 meter band, the offset is 600 kilohertz, and for the 70 centimeter band, the offset is 5 megahertz. There are exceptions, and you'll usually uh, they'll usually list that if it doesn't follow the, the general rule. Now, if you haven't already done a flash update of your radio to have the latest firmware, you should probably do that first. And also, uh, you should make a copy of whatever's in the radio and save that to a file. And that file is what's called the code plug. It has all of the settings of your radio, and we're going to configure that now. So, assuming you've opened the GD77 configuration software, the first thing you should do is tell it all of the talk groups that you gathered from the local repeaters. And that's what they call digital contacts. It's a, it's a translation error. It should be called talk groups. This is in the contacts, contacts folder on the left. Um, it's confusing also because contact is ham lingo, meaning that you found somebody on the airwaves. But that's not what they mean in this software. They only mean talk groups. Now, once you have all the talk groups set up, you want to make a scan list. For now, we will not add anything to the scan list. It just needs to exist. 
So open the folder on the left called Scan and rename the first one to Home by right clicking on it. And that's it, don't open it yet. If you don't like the name Home, you can call it whatever you want, like the city you're in or the county you're in. Uh, and now you should save the file, but give it a different file name uh, so that you can go back in case you mess things up. In fact, I suggest saving often with different file names so you can always go back if something gets messed up. Now we want to set up a receive group. This is a kind of filter where, where the radio will ignore everybody who is not talking in a talk group that's in your receive group. So basically, you need this in order to hear anybody. So open the RX group list on the left side and rename the first one to home. Open the home list. Now you will want to populate the right side with everything by using the add button. Unfortunately, it will only hold 16 items. So if you have more than 16 talk groups listed, you want to leave out the ones you'll most likely want to use. You'll least likely want to use, sorry. <laughs> Doing one take here on the audio. I'm going to make mistakes. I am human after all. Now this does not mean all hope is lost for hearing all talk groups. The radio has a monitor mode, which is activated by pressing the middle button on the left side for two seconds or so. That's the long press. You'll know you're in monitor mode when there's a speaker icon near the upper right corner of the LCD screen on the radio. Now we want to set up the channel list. Intuitively, this would have been the first step, but there are settings in the channel setup which refer to all the other things that we just did, which is why we did those things first, so we don't have to go back and fix it afterwards. First of all, don't delete any channels. That seems to activate bugs. In fact, don't delete stuff in general on here. If there's extra stuff, just leave it there. Now open the channel folder on the left. And here we'll make a list of our local repeaters and put in all the relevant information for each repeater. Unfortunately, it does not allow you to set up both time slots for the DMR repeaters. So you might want to make two separate entries for each DMR repeater. The name should probably be the call sign of the repeater followed by each time slot. The display of the radio will only show 10 characters if you have it in a mode where, where it will show you the, um, the name. Whereas the software lets you enter 15 characters, so it could get cut off. So you might just want to limit yourself to 10 characters. Now where it says scan list, this is the scan list that will be activated when you start scanning while tuned to this channel. I know that's a little confusing. If this channel is not in that scan list, then the channel will not be scanned. It's a little bit crazy. We'll get to that later. Where it says RX group list, put in your home receive group. This makes sure you will hear all of the normal traffic in your area. When you transmit using this channel, it will use the talk group that you assign in the contact name pull down menu. If this is an analog repeater, you should set it to analog in the upper left corner and set the tone frequency where it says TX, CT, CSS, DSS, a bunch of other letters. Some repeaters also transmit a tone, which can be used as an additional squelch so you don't get random bursts of noise. If the repeater transmits a tone, you can put the, the frequency on the receive side but this may cut off the beginning of each transmission because it has to listen for the tone first before opening the squelch. Once you're done setting up all of the channels, you can make the scan list. Go to the home scan list from earlier and open it. Now you want to populate the right column using the add button. Again, it will only allow 16 items, so you might have to leave off the most, or the least important ones, making that same mistake again, jeez. Uh, you can skip this whole step if you don't ever plan on scanning, but you probably do want to scan. 
Another thing you might want to do is make two scan lists, one for analog and one for digital, because sometimes the analog has a lot of traffic that you don't want to hear. <laughs> anyway, if you do this, you'll have to go back to the channel settings and make sure that the digital channels are set to the digital scan group and the receive channels are set to the receive scan group, which I should have told you earlier, but ha ha. Now you have extra work to do. Once the scan list is done, you can set up the zone. The zone is your geographical area. In this case, I'm, I've been calling it home. This list is what your radio will display as possible channels that you can use while you're in that zone. And again, it's listed to, limited to 16 items, which is kind of annoying. So now you're done making your code plug. You can congratulate yourself. Um, save the file. That's very important and then download it to the radio. They call it write. When you hover over it, it says write. That writes it to the radio. If you accidentally read from the radio, you can close the file, don't save it, and then reopen the saved file. Um, and now if you wanna add another zone for another geographic area, you can go through this whole process again for the other zone. You just need to make new entries for the new location where I previously called it home. If the new area overlaps some repeaters with your home area, you might wanna make new channels for them with a slightly different name. And the reason is that the receive scan list, uh, you might wanna have different for the other zone so that you don't accidentally scan your home area while you're out of town. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that is about it for a really quick rundown on how to set up a radio, Radiodity GD77. That was as fast as I could do it here and I didn't include every detail. I just wanted to get you set up and running so you can get on the air and figure out all the smaller details later on. Thanks for watching.